Aerodynamics was one of the most influential coaster manufacturers of all time. They had a series of advancements that forever changed the coaster industry. They developed tubular steel track for the Matterhorn bobsleds at Disneyland, and most manufacturers now use that track type today. They created the mine train genre. They reintroduced inversions with a corkscrew at Knott's Berry Farm. They also brought back the suspended coaster with the bat at Kings Island, built the first full circuit hypercoaster with Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point, and built the first fourth dimension coaster in X, or X2 as it goes by today, at Six Flags Magic Mountain. These developments were all groundbreaking, but unfortunately, the company's final coaster, the aforementioned X2, caused them to go bankrupt and close in 2001. But let's take some time to honor this manufacturer by counting down their top 30 roller coasters. This list will only include rides I've personally experienced, but I believe I've been on most of their major coasters still in operation. This list will only include two defunct coasters, Several of their loopers were removed before I got a chance to get out and experience them. Fortunately, most of them still have very similar layouts in existence, and I'll touch on them when appropriate. For the sake of this list, I also will not be including Steel Phantom at Kennywood. I only experienced this coaster after the Morgan transformation. I always heard the ride was rough, but that second drop combined with a flurry of forceful inversions might have claimed a top 3 spot. There are three other defunct coasters that I had a chance to place in the top three. That includes two suspended coasters in the original Bat at Kings Island and Eagle's Fortress at Everland. Both appear to have insane swinging, and the latter also an incredible setting on a wooded mountain. Then there was the Titan Max Mini Hyper Coaster at the now defunct Space World in Japan. Finally, there is another high profile SBNO coaster I've yet to experience. That would be none other than Desperado at Buffalo Bills Resort. I've heard many call this ride excessively rough, but it has always intrigued me with that colossal first drop and the long layout winding around the property. Lastly, if you want more in-depth thoughts on any of these rides, I have separate reviews already published for many of them. Number 30. Runaway Mine Train at Six Flags Grey Adventure This mine train is a fun setting in the woods. The first half is pretty mild, but things get interesting in the second half. There's a bunny hill with some thigh-crushing ejector airtime for all. That moment comes out of nowhere. Those in the back also get another weak spot of airtime or two in the second half. Number 29, Anaconda King's Dominion. This multi-looper gets too much hate. The middle section is awful, no sugarcoating that. The mid-course takes all your speed away. Then you crawl through these slow and awkward pretzel turns. Watch your head here. Everything around it is solid though. You have a nice location in the water, then the first half of some serious bite between the vertical loop and sidewinder. Then the final two corkscrews are slow, so they inadvertently offer some hang time. Number 28, Demon at Six Flags Great America and California's Great America. These coasters are very similar. Both have some fun theming between a catchy theme song and some tunnels by the corkscrews and the two loops pile on the positive G's. The first drop doesn't have the same airtime as the other loopers on this list, and some of the transitions are jerky, but it is a classic. Number 27, Carolina Cyclone at Carowinds. This old looper has its good and bad moments. On the bright side, the first drop and entry into the turnaround give abrupt pops of airtime, and the two vertical loops are quite forceful. Then the two corkscrews are okay. Unfortunately, the train shuffles in several valleys and turns, which hurts the overall comfort. Number 26, Ninja at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This suspended coaster is built on the back side of the mountain. You gradually wind down it, dashing past trees and building speed as you go. It takes a while to get going, but the final few turns are pretty intense. You are swung nearly horizontal to the ground. Number 25, Vampire or Chessington World of Adventures. This is a scenic suspended coaster. Most of the layout goes through the woods, keeping the layout a mystery. There are a few decent drops along the way that build up speed. While the open Vacoma trains offer more freedom, the swinging didn't feel quite as extreme as some of the older trains. Still, this is a fun ride if you enjoy a visually based ride. Number 24, Big Bad John at Magic Springs and River King Mine Train at Six Flags St. Louis. These are two of the smoother mine train coasters out there. Most of the ride is a scenic jaunt through the woods, 
but the finale ups the ante. You have a sharp drop into a tunnel. If you're in that back car, you get some jarring ejector airtime. Number 23, Adventure Express at King's Island. This mine train has a unique layout. You have two lift hills, one in the middle and one at the end. And that finale is legendary going from this themed lift hill straight into the final break run. It is positively mind scratching. But the downhill sections have decent pacing with a few tunnels, good use of terrain, and some fun turns offering light positive G's or laterals. Number 22, Thunderation at Silver Dollar City. This mine train starts atop a wooded hill and rumbles right down it. The coaster keeps picking up speed as it goes. This leads to a decently forceful helix and a shockingly fast turn at the bottom. Then, instead of finishing with a boring old lift hill, this coaster throws in its largest drop at the very end and route back to the station. I've gotten some bumpier rides on this coaster in the past, but I cannot look past its uniqueness and visuals. Number 21. Roadrunner Express at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This Alan Schilke designed mine train is more of a daring layout than the older mine trains. It goes above a quarry wall, holds its speed better, mixes in a few airtime moments, and hits riders with positive G's on the turns and valleys. Plus, it also rides a bit smoother. Number 20. Viper at Six Flags Darien Lake. This multi-looper was the first coaster with five inversions. The coaster is nice ejector airtime in the first drop, and a forceful trio of inversions in the first half. The corkscrews in the second half are taken slowly, so you'll feel yourself lift out of your seat a bit. While the layout is solid, the tracking isn't perfect. The ride has several spots with jackhammering and slamming. Number 19, Steeplechase at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. This is probably the tamest coaster on this list, but this ride has two things going for it. One, the racing element is executed extremely well. Two, the horses you ride on leave you far more open than almost any other coaster car. Don't expect thrills, just expect fun. Number 18, Mad Mouse at Michigan's Adventure. Arrow did not build many wild mice, but this is the best one they made by far. The first few hairpin turns of solid laterals per usual, but the braking never really kicks in, so the laterals stay strong throughout. Then the second half is some shocking airtime for this type of ride. Most drops have quick pops of airtime, and that little bunny hill even gives weak sustained ejector. Just beware this ride's capacity. Number 17, Loch Ness Monster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This is one of the most iconic roller coasters out there. The interlocking vertical loops look stunning, and they also have strong positive Gs. Then if you ride in the back, you will also get abrupt jolts of airtime on the three main drops, the ride does have two issues though. One, the pacing. The middle section drags the long and slow indoor helix and the second lift hill. Two, the shakiness. The train rattles on the turns and valleys, so you can hit your head if you're on the shorter side. Number 16, Vortex at King's Island. This looper had an unconventional layout. There were two big drops at the start, one of which had nice floater airtime. The two vertical loops delivered strong positives. Then you had two enjoyable corkscrews in the middle before tackling a bat wing towards the end. This element offered a mix of hang time and positives. The one downside is that some of the transitions could cause headbanging. Number 15, Excalibur at Valley Fair. This is a bizarre ride that looks like a mine train, but it has far punchier elements. The first drop is trimmed, but once you clear the brakes, those in back get a delayed and violent burst of ejector airtime. The ride then flies through a brief layout, which also includes an intense S hill that will eject everyone. The ride is short and a bit bumpy, but it delivers some memorable elements. It is also worth noting there's a ride that looks similar in Japan called the Yagiyama Cyclone. I haven't personally ridden it, but I have a few friends who have and says the first drop is even more intense. Number 14, Dragon Mountain at Marineland. This looping coaster is often called the Beast of Steel Coasters, and I can see why. It spans 30 acres, and the setting is fairly isolated. You ride around, on top, and through a heavily wooded hillside. The ride's pacing is not the best, as it does a lot of meandering, but it never gets rough. And there are some good elements. The first drop is good airtime, and the four inversions all offer good Gs, particularly the back-to-back -back vertical loops. Number 13. 
Big Bad Wolf at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This suspended coaster is famous for the Rhine River drop, and that was one of the most visually intimidating drops out there. It really felt like you'd snap off the track and fall into the water. The rest of the second half was fast, and had some wild swinging too. The first half was not nearly as intense, but you swung through a scenic Bavarian village. There were some good near misses there. Number 12. Bat at King's Island. This suspended coaster starts with a big drop. The ride then holds its speed well until the very end. It is fast to begin with, but it feels even faster whizzing past all those trees. The layout is short, but you have a series of low and snappy turns that cause some wild swinging. Number 11. Viper at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is the last of the Arrow Mega Loopers. The first drop whips you down it. Then the three vertical loops always cause me to gray out from their force. The mid-course trim slows you way down though. So the final four inversions have some unintended hang time on the batwing and corkscrews. While the coaster's pacing is not perfect and some of the turns are jerky, the contrast of positive G's and hang time on the inversions makes it enjoyable. It is worth noting that I never experienced the Great American Scream Machine at Six Flags Great Adventure or Shockwave at Six Flags Great America, but both those rides had similar layouts and had a chance to play similarly. Number 10. Matterhorn Bobsleds at Disneyland. This ranking is specifically for the Tomorrowland side, which is the wilder of the two tracks. The ride is famous for being the first coast with a tubular steel track. It may be jerky at points, but it is a pure joy weaving through the mountain. It is impossible to tell where you're going next, and some of those turns are super tight. Then there's an awesome drop towards the end with an abrupt pop of airtime. Number 9. Vortex at Canada's Wonderland. This suspended coaster's layout is nearly identical to the aforementioned bat, but this one is far more forceful. The speed and swinging feel similar, but it is accompanied by strong positive G's here. Every single turn offers a mix of wild swinging and great forces, particularly on that picturesque helix around Yukon Striker. This ride is short, but it's fast and furious. Number 8. Big Thunder Mountain at Disneyland and Magic Kingdom. These two mine trains do everything you could want from this type of ride. You have the visuals. The track wraps around and through a beautiful mountain. Then you have a long layout with some thrills too. There are several small dips giving quick bursts of airtime. And the turns and helixes offer nice laterals too. Especially since there's no seat divider so you'll be sliding side to side. Number 7. Gemini at Cedar Point. This racing hybrid coaster has some underrated airtime. The first half is particularly strong in the back car, but the front gets their turn rising into the turnarounds. Then the tight valleys also throw in some positive G's as well. The pullouts and valleys have some bumps, but it is worth it for the negative G's in that racing element. Number 6. Canyon Blaster at Adventure Dome. This coaster has the same layout as the aforementioned Carolina Cyclone, but it is a far better experience. For one, the ride is newer and smoother. Two, it's indoors and runs around and through a rock structure. This enhances the sense of speed and results in a more disorienting ride. Three, it is faster. This amplifies the already intense forces. You have good floater on the drop, two forceful vertical loops, a pop of airtime, and two quick corkscrews. Number five, the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. This hypercoaster starts off with one of my favorite drops out there. It is devilishly twisted and the train is violently snapped down it. The rest of the layout is pretty mild with only some weak pops of airtime here and there, but you get a long and scenic ride as you wind your way through the park. The visuals are fantastic. Number 14, the shuttle loop. These launched loops don't have the best uptime, but they're intense. After climbing a tower, you are launched out of the station. This launch is weak, but everything that follows sure is not. You get a violent burst of ejector airtime going down the drop. Then you navigate a forceful vertical loop. You then rise up another platform, getting yet another ejector pop. You then pause briefly and are launched backwards to repeat the layout. The forces are even better in this direction because backwards ejector airtime is a rare delight, especially if you're on one of the installations with a longer six car train. Number 3. Tennessee Tornado at Dollywood. One of the company's last looping coasters, this one feels way different. 
the elements are supersized, and the ride has a glass smooth tracking. It is shocking how much smoother this ride is than their earlier coasters. As for the elements, that first drop is incredible. It pierces through the mountain and offers great sustained floater airtime. The first inversion offers a little bit of hang time with its size, while the next two hit you with positive Gs. The one downside with this coaster is that it's super short, but I will take quality over quantity. Number 2. Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point The original full circuit hypercoaster was a trailblazer. It paved the way for the airtime focused mega coasters we love today. The ride is rough around the edges, which is a good and bad thing. Some of the transitions are jerky, but the triangular shaped bunny hills on the return run offer some of the most aggressive airtime of any coaster. Then the first half has more sustained airtime while offering stunning views of Lake Erie. And coming in number one is X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. While this coaster ended aerodynamics, it is their crowning achievement. This fourth dimension coaster was so ahead of its time between its scale and flipping seats. This coaster is insane. You have a near vertical drop at the start. The seats face you towards the ground for it, and then you flip at the last second. Then you have some more world class inversions. The first Raven turn offers strong positive G's in airtime. The two Camelbacks in the middle offer sustained weightlessness as the track and trains rotate. The final Raven turn delivers crushing positive G's and then the twist into the brake run throws your body wildly. This coaster is bouncy, particularly on the outside seats, but it is one of the most memorable coaster experiences in the world. So those are the top 30 aerodynamics coasters I have personally experienced. What are your favorite coasters from this manufacturer? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos, here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.